Hello everybody and welcome back to Amity Blue. My name is Nazzy. Today I'm going to be doing a journal with me in my Oceans Apart heirloom envelopes. I'm going to be showing you how to utilize your textiles and your metal embellishments. These are the textiles and the metal embellishments. This is just a little tiny sample of the metal embellishments and the bohemian textiles that you will be receiving and that are part of my bohemian textile embellishment kit. The kit along with the linen lace will be released over the weekend and I thought it was a perfect time to show you how you can utilize the bohemian textiles that are included in the kit and show you how you can utilize them to journal in your journal pages, decorate your envelopes if you took the heirloom envelopes course, or just give you an idea as to how you can journal and decorate anything that you'd like in the signature bohemian style. So to start off, these are the envelopes that I'm going to be using to decorate. As you can see, the envelopes are in three different sizes. One's a slightly larger and one's a little bit smaller. And then we have this teeny tiny, really cute little bohemian envelope. I'm going to be decorating them in a similar style as I decorated my bohemian dreams heirloom envelopes as you can see all of the beautiful pieces that are hanging and dangling. I filmed this journaling process and I will link it below if you're interested. Now the materials that I'm going to be using are obviously going to be some of my textiles, some of my metal embellishments from my kit. Of course you always need some sequins next to you if you're doing anything in the bohemian style. I also want to get a little bit artsy and I have some ink tense pencils. These pencils were recommended to me by the amazingly sweet Allie Brown. I watched some of her journal with me videos and she was the one that got me hooked on these. I'm also going to be using some gelatos, some Faber-Castell gelatos. I have this little chalk, basically just sticking to art supplies that are in the blue tone and scheme of colors. I'm also going to be using some stamps if I want to decorate a little bit further. I have different types of masking tape, some really old authentic vintage masking tape, and then some really pretty washi masking tape as well. I also have right next to me some of the paper materials that I'm going to be using to decorate and to journal into the heirloom envelopes. I have some ephemera that I have already made and I've saved from previous journals that I've created. I have vintage ephemera. I have papers that have been left over from previous journals. Just a lot of paper that I have recycled from journals that I have created, packaging, scrapbook papers, that kind of thing. I also am going to be using the scraps that I have from leftover file folders that I, from a project that I was doing. And this is going to be the main focal point to the entire journaling process. I'm going to teach you how you can basically create a mini journal, super simple and easy, and how you can incorporate that into your heirloom envelopes or how you can incorporate that into your personal journal as well. As for the envelopes themselves, I'm not going to be journaling in this teeny tiny envelope. As you can see, it's been sealed with my wax seal that has an A for Amity Bloom. If you're interested in learning how to create this beautiful wax seal, I teach that as a bonus video in my heirloom envelopes course. So I show you how to get this exact and beautiful design onto your envelopes if you're interested. For this tiny little cute envelope, I actually have already filled it up with a letter that I wrote to myself a, probably a little while ago. It was when I was filming the course and prior to teaching you how to create this wax seal in the course, I put in there a letter to myself that I have addressed to be opened when I turn 50. Since I was little, I loved doing that. I'd always write little letters to myself. And on the front of the letter, I'd say, open this when you're 10, open this when you're 18, and so on and so forth. So this is something that I've done since I was little, and it's something that I will continue to do, which is why the heirloom envelopes are just so special to me. So this little secret envelope is already journaled in, so I will not need to decorate that any further. But what you could do is you could add charms, you could add some fabric on the side but I just love the simple and just the beautiful details of gold I think that's just beyond perfect already so I'm not going to be working with that one however I am going to be focusing my attention on both of these little envelopes here so to begin the process I think I'm going to start out with the biggest envelope which is this one 
So I know for a fact that I want to include this little project that I have here for this particular envelope. So let me keep that to the side here and I'm going to reach for my file folders and I'm just going to turn them just like this just to show you the idea of what I'm trying to create. We're basically going to attach these two pieces together so that we form basically our journal covers. And then I'm going to tip in this little file folder scrap piece in the middle. This is what essentially my journal is going to be. It's basically going to be a mini notebook that I'm going to use to journal in instead of a typical letter that you would typically find inside of an envelope. So to start off the process, I have my two scraps from my file folders and prior to attaching them together, I'm going to decorate them a little bit. So I've decided that this will be my cover and then this will be the back of my little notebook. So let's start working on the cover for now. I have some really pretty scrapbook papers that I want to use as well as some scraps of some really old Arabic dictionary pages that I have tea stained and got some really cool little splotches on them. I also have this which is some packaging, some leftover packaging. And I also have some of these papers. So this is pretty much some good papers to start off with. All right, so I have some of the papers that I want to use to decorate the cover with. Before you start decorating your notebook, you want to know what exactly you want to document inside of your notebook and then go with that theme. The color scheme is blue, of course, so I'm sticking to that color scheme in regards to the scrap of paper. But for the decorative pieces, this is all going to be travel themed. If you watched the first process video of my Bohemian Dreams heirloom envelopes, in here I wanted to document the story of my parents and how they met. So with all of my heirloom envelopes, I'm going to be documenting a particular part of my life, a very important story that I want to be documented and that I want to keep as heirlooms. So for this particular set for the Oceans Apart, I want to be documenting my journey as an immigrant in this country, the struggles that I face, the reality of having to leave your native country. So I want to document my story as this little girl coming to America, moving from Mexico to America. So that's what I want to document here. I'm going to start off by just gluing down random pieces of paper onto the cover just to make it look pretty and vintage and aesthetically pleasing. This part is super fun. You're basically just collaging papers onto paper. <laughs> You're collaging papers onto paper. So I'm just going to add some of that craft paper. I'm then going to just put some more glue. It's not really important if you don't get all of the glue or if your papers don't adhere perfectly. So I just trimmed around it and make sure you don't throw out your scraps. It's very important to keep your scraps because you can use them to decorate your pages even further. This looks really, really pretty and I think I want to repeat the same design on this page. And this is going to be the back of our little notebook. So essentially it would be like the back cover of your journal. So I'm just going to glue this right on top, just like that. So this is essentially what it's going to look like. This is the front and that's the back. So for here, as you can see, we won't have enough pages to cover the whole part. So we're going to have to collage some different papers there. So just take your glue stick, take your pages. So take Ooh, this side's a lot prettier than the front, I have to say. So we're going to take our pages just like that. Beautiful. And then here at the bottom, I'm just going to add some glue and add that paper right on top. Perfect. So now we're going to flip this over and then cut around your file folder. Alright, so I just finished cutting along the edges and this is what we're left with. It looks absolutely beautiful and you can kind of see the covers starting to come together. So that is exactly how I was envisioning it in my head. I'm so happy it actually worked. 
So now we're going to be focusing on the inside. So on the inside, I know I want to decorate it with some of these pages. So I know for one entire sheet, I want to make sure that this is the background for the inside of my little notebook. So we're just going to take this and we're going to place it just like that. And the reason that I love these pages in particular is because the coffee stain took so beautifully to this paper, as you can see. So this one is ready. Then for this piece of paper, I think I'm going to use some of this really pretty vintage origami styled paper. Add some glue. And like I said, don't worry if some of your paper pieces don't glue on perfectly. You can always pass them through your sewing machine. Then for up here at the cover, I want to include this particular paper. As you can see, I'm sticking to one singular color tone, which is brown. I don't want to incorporate any other colors. So flip it over, and it might look a little wonky. <laughs> um, flip it over and then trim the excess papers. So this is what the inside covers of my notebook look like. It looks absolutely perfect. And now what's left over is to start decorating the inside flap that will be included and basically tipped in with tape on the inside. So to decorate the inside flap, I have some really cool bits of papers that I want to use for my scraps. So I think all I'm going to do is just collage these papers just so that it gives me some journaling space as well as some decorative space. Let me go ahead and glue this right to the cover. Put this map page right there. And the reason I chose this particular image is because it shows the United States. And this is perfect because I traveled from Mexico to the United States. Even though the heirloom envelopes, because it's called Oceans Apart, it's primarily sea themed and like ocean themed. I did not travel by ship to the United States. I traveled by plane. But still, nonetheless, the whole concept of being apart, like oceans apart, from that one person or that one place that you love, you know, it has an impact on you. And then on the side, I'm just going to add some glue and I'm going to glue the paper right onto the side of the page, just like that. So now it's time to flip it over and trim the sides once more. So this is what it looks like after I have trimmed the excess paper. So then turn it on the back and for the decoration for the back piece, I have this little printable of a postcard of a vintage postcard that I have in my collection. I don't like using the actual real postcards just because, oops, <laughs> just because um, those are heirlooms to me. Those are antiques and I don't want to glue them. I don't want to cut them up. So I like to scan them and then use them as ephemera or like collage papers. And then for this little insert, I know I want to use this. And then this was a pocket collage that I created for my immigrant journals. If you're familiar with my immigrant journal collection, I created some collage paper pockets. And I loved the quote and it says, distant from the place you call home. And that could not be any more perfect. So I'm going to create a little pocket on this side. So I know that I want to be able to tuck things into that corner. So for this little corner, I need to decorate it a little bit. So I'm going to take some of this paper because I think it's the perfect size. I'm just going to add some glue and glue that right in place. So all I'm gonna do now is make sure you turn it over, trim the excess papers, and that is what you're left with. Now all I have to do is go to my sewing machine and sew this right onto the corner. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine, I'm going to sew the pocket together, and on these pages, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a little envelope and place it right here. 
So let me go ahead and stitch this on my sewing machine. So I just stitched my pocket into place and now I'm going to focus my attention to the inside cover pages of my little notebook. On this side I want to experiment with mixed media and with the textiles to create kind of like waves in the ocean. And then on this side I want to create some form of an envelope. So for the envelope I'm just going to be using this little scrap of some craft cardstock. And this is going to be the easiest and most simple little envelope pocket that you have ever seen in your life probably. I want to make sure that I make this as simple and as easy as possible just to show you that anyone can create a special little notebook out of your scraps. So I'm just going to cut and I'm not going to use my paper trimmer, I'm just going to be using my scissors. I just want to cut the pocket for the envelope just like that and then I want to cut the sides of the envelope. So this is what we're left over. So I'm just going to take my little piece of paper here. So this is what you're essentially left with. Just a little piece of paper that you fold into thirds and this is going to be our simple little envelope. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off of the envelope, just a little bit so that the flap a little bit more visible, just like that. And we're going to stamp something on the front flap of our envelope. So this is what your little envelope looks like. It's super, super simple to create and it's really easy to make as well. I'm then going to take a stamp and I'm going to stamp on the front flap of our envelope. So this is the stamp that I'm going to use and the stamp says to someone special. Hopefully you can see that on camera. It didn't really pick it up as well as I thought it was going to. So the stamping wasn't as clear as I would have liked. So I'm just going to go in with a pen and go over the stamp. And the stamp just says to someone special. And I love this stamp. I don't remember where I got it. I don't remember how I got it. I just know that it's one of my favorites in my entire collection. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some double-sided tape and I'm going to close the flaps down. You can take this to your sewing machine but you can definitely just use double-sided tape as it's something that we can all easily find. So let's peel off the tape so that we can let the adhesive stick. And then you just fold it over and we have our little, and this creates a little pocket on the inside. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to add the double-sided tape on the back of our envelope as well. This is so that we essentially have a double pocket that we can use. And I love creating double pockets in my personal journal as well as the journals that I create because it gives you double the space basically. So I'm just going to take the envelope and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to attach it to my page, just like this. So now that this page is done, I want to focus now on this back page. And I'm essentially going to be creating kind of like a wave type of look by ripping the pages. So just like that. And I'm going to glue this onto the page. Now you can make this a pocket, but I just think that that would be too much pocket. And I wanna be able to write on top of my mixed media, on top of what I painted. So we're just gonna rip it, and I'm just going to cut the excess paper, just like that. So this is what I'm left with. So I'm going to take my ink tense pencil and I'm going to start out by like drawing the waves of the ocean. You're basically just coloring in the waves of the ocean. I'm using two different types of colors. One is like a really beautiful teal 
and the other is a really beautiful sky blue. We're then going to take some water and I'm just going to emphasize those lines, trying to really spread out the ink and the pigment. So this gives us a background to work with and I am then going to take one of our gelatos and I'm just going to add it right in the middle of our watercolor and just blend it with our finger. I'm just going to blend and spread our gelatos over to the corner. If you haven't worked with gelatos, I completely recommend it. It's such a beautiful medium to work with and it's really a lot of fun and it's a great way to add color to paper or to your artworks. So now that I have spread out that light blue color, I am then going to come into the corners and I probably should be using a scrap piece of paper so that I don't mess up my white table here. <laughs> I'm just going to add definition and different layers to the waves. So I have extended the waves from the gelatos a little bit further because now it's finally time to start decorating with the beautiful blue textiles that are included in my textile embellishment kit. As you can see, I have different types of textiles right next to me in my little bowl. Lots of different types of silks, and I want to really focus on following the waves that I have drawn in with some of the textiles. So I'm just going to go in and choose some of the colors that I want to work with. I then am going to cut it into little strips just like this, and I'm going to mimic the effect of a wave. So now that I have chosen the textiles that I want to incorporate on here as waves, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this in like a ruffle format, and then I will show you how it looks right onto the page. All right, so I took my textiles. As you can see, it looks blinding. It looks absolutely beautiful. So now that I have my textiles collaged and sewn together, I want to include my textile in the lower portion of my little page. This is just going to give it an effect of water and it's going to combine in with the really pretty waves that we drew in. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to my sewing machine, stitch it up, and I will be right back. So I just finished stitching this onto the page. It looks absolutely beautiful. I love how the light reflects the beautiful textiles, the silks, the sequined fabric. It's all coming together so nicely and it looks like the wave. You get that feeling of an ocean when you look at this page and when you look at this page. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to bring in my embellishments, my metal embellishments, and this is just a little sneak peek as to the embellishments that you will be getting in the textile bohemian kit. Now these embellishments, just like any embellishments in my textile kit, these embellishments are 100% authentic from India. I can't wait to give you guys the final reveal with these embellishments. They look absolutely beautiful and I think especially this one, I want to incorporate it and place it here at the bottom corner because it kind of reminds me of a sand dollar. Sand dollars have a really unique look to them and this reminds me exactly of a sand dollar and I would love to include it right along here in the corner as if there was a little sand dollar stuck in the ocean. Now, I can stitch it onto the page because I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. There are two little holes in the metallic embellishment so that you can sew them onto your fabric. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew it right into the corner. So I'm going to be sewing my metal embellishment onto my fabric and the page. So let me take some thread and I'm going to pass it through my needle. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass it through my metal embellishment. I'm going to pierce the holes. So I'm just going to go like that. And then I'm going to cut off a little bit of thread and I'm going to tie it. So I passed some thread through the hole. I stitched it to the side of the page 
And then in order for it to permanently be placed down, I'm just going to use some glue. Now you can use whatever glue you have on hand that works well with metals. I'm going to be using tacky glue just because it works really well when working with thin metals. Not anything that's too thick, but with thin metals, it's been able to adhere properly. So I'm just going to push my metal embellishment right onto my fabric just so that it gets a nice grip and sticks perfectly. And there you go. You have your beautiful metal embellishment right on top of your textiles. Now we're at the part where we can finally start connecting our pieces together. And the way that I'm going to connect it is take some masking tape. And like I said, this is really old vintage masking tape. Now, of course, you can use washi tape, and I actually am going to just to decorate it a little bit, but you just want to make sure you use some type of tape in order for it to connect. That way it can open and it can close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the excess tape right off. This is essentially your binding that you would do on a journal. You're just doing it with tape. Super, super easy looks absolutely beautiful. So now that we have our covers connected and our notebook pretty much starting to assemble itself, we want to attach and include our little middle piece. So all we're going to do is take some washi. You kind of see a trend here. <laughs> so we're going to take our washi tape and we're simply going to tip it in. Just like you would with the journal, this is exactly what we're going to do with our little mini notebook. I am using the same techniques that you would use in a journal, like in a journaling process, but the only difference is that we're applying it to create a little mini notebook that will be a journal. So just attach your washi tape just like that. And there you go, you have your pages all set and nice. And in the back, just because I want to keep this look a little rustic, I'm going to take some of this really pretty script washi and I'm just going to include it right along here. This just adds more interest and kind of makes it look a little bit more organic and rustic, which is the style that I'm going for. Especially with the story that I want to document, it's going to be my story of immigrating to a different country. And I just think of more organic and rustic colors and styles and adding little pops of color of blue symbolizing the ocean that's between me and my home country. So there we go. And here's our little notebook. It's absolutely darling. It's starting to get a little chunky, which I love. So what I'm thinking of doing is obviously creating a little title for this. And then when you open up my little notebook, I'll have a picture of my previous home that I had in Mexico. I'll include some ephemera in this pocket. To this someone special, that someone special is me. And I want to write really personally about what I thought the first time I came to America. I came to America when I was about four years old, three or four. And it was my first time ever being on a plane. And let me just tell you, that in itself is a story. <laughs> Sorry for the coffee interruption. <laughs> so I want to document that. And then here, distant from the place you call home, I want to include some ephemera that I saved. I photocopied some pictures from my passport. And I want to include them in the pockets just as like reference and as memory. I want to journal here about the differences between Mexico and the United States of America. Let's pretend this is a postcard or a picture of something. You can tuck it in here, put a little paper clip, and continue to add ephemera and build your little notebook together. And you can do all of this without having to have a legitimate journal in front of you. So I think we are pretty much done with my little notebook slash journal. I really, really loved how this turned out. So this is the finished little notebook that I created. And this notebook will be tucked in to, let me take the little burlap twine off. Oh, I forgot I put that here. It says all of us are waves on the ocean. Oh, I love that. So now I'm going to put my notebook right inside 
of my envelope and it fits perfectly. And then I'm going to take my burlap twine and just wrap it around the reinforcers that I made. And there you go. My little notebook is nice and safe inside my beautiful, beautiful envelope. And the best part about the envelope is I can keep putting ephemera just tucked inside of the envelope. I also have some letters that I have from family members in Mexico that I will also include here. So I'm just so excited to fill up my little envelope. So this one is done. Now we're moving on to this one, and this is also one of my favorites because of this really cute little quote that I have here, and the technique that I used to create this to make it look as if the quote is like underwater. I teach you the technique that I utilized in the heirloom envelopes course, and I really, really loved how that turned out. And then on the front, I have a textile collage on the side, some really pretty images, and then this ink splatter, which I'm going to journal a little phrase that was always said to me when I was little so I will put that right in there. So I need to choose some papers and ephemera that I can include inside of my envelope. I know I want to use this and this is a leftover ephemera piece that I made from the immigrant collection. I think this was from the Greek journal that I ended up keeping but it's basically a postcard and it's not a real one it's from scrap of paper. I cut off some matte paper and then I made a pocket out of some vellum with this really beautiful quote that has to do with the sea. So it's essentially a triple pocket. <laughs> so you have a pocket right here in the vellum, you have a pocket on the map, and then you have a pocket in the postcard wh wherever you decide to sew this or glue this onto a page you will have the back pocket as well. So in this case, what I think I'm gonna do is the back, I'm going to put a picture, and then this is just going to serve as a floating pocket to be put into my envelope. So this is primarily already done. So I have some really pretty marble paper and then some tea stain paper with a really pretty graphic on it. I also want to create, perhaps like on this little card, I might cut this in half. And I want to create essentially like a little fabric dictionary card. And what I mean by that is I love taking scraps of paper and essentially making like a little reference page of the different types of fabrics that I have in my collection. So I think I'm going to do that with this beautiful, beautiful fabric that is included in the textile kit. I am obsessed with it. It looks like a really pretty piece of vintage washi. You can see that the colors that I'm using, oh my gosh, this is some beautiful silk that is also included in the textile bohemian kit. And I need to place it so that there's enough room. Hold on. I think I know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm going to cut this a little shorter, just like that. Place that there. So this is essentially what I'm creating. I like to do this with all of my fabric whenever I get a collection of journals out or I buy fabric that I really like. I create kind of like a little reference card and the reason that I do this is because it's kind of like a scrapbook for the fabric that I really, you know, was attached to and that I really liked. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some glue and there's no need to pass this through your sewing machine because all you're doing is essentially just gluing and ad adhering your fabric down. And there you go, you have your really pretty little fabric sample card and I'm going to be putting that into my little pocket as well. I also then want to take some sequins here. So I pulled out a couple of sequins from the card and I'm going to stitch it right up at the top through my sewing machine. And these same sequins are included in the textile bohemian kit as well. So everything that you see me use that is a textile or an embellishment is included in your kit. So let me go ahead, stitch this onto the card and I will be right back. So here is my little ephemera piece. I passed the very top through my sewing machine and I have added some sequins. And then this is put into the pocket and then when you move it in different directions, it gets a little bit of that glistening, really pretty iridescent look. So this is essentially done. The next thing that I might want to include in the pocket is this 
photocopy of a vintage postcard. I'm going to be including these two items and pages in my envelope. And I'm just going to be tucking them in just like that. Perfect. And then this way, all I have to do is add some pictures on the marble paper, journal behind my little fabric sample sheet, journal on my little sequin paper, and just continue to journal. You can even journal on the envelope, which is something that I really like. Of course, I'm going to be putting something special right up at the top. So I think we are done decorating all of the envelopes so that we can begin journaling in them. This is the type of method that I like to utilize, which is decorating your pages first and then going in and filling them in with your photos and with your words. And it makes me really enjoy the decorative process a lot more and it makes me enjoy the writing and documenting process a lot more as well. So I truly hope that you guys enjoyed this journal with me. I know it's something different as not a lot of people tend to journal in envelope form, but if you're curious as to what this style and what this method of documenting your life in an envelope, I will link below all of the videos regarding the heirloom envelopes, the course if you're interested in taking it and learning how to create these envelopes. And of course, make sure just to tune in to this weekend where the textile embellishment kit will be released finally after two months of working on it. It is finally finished and it will definitely be released this weekend. I will post a video of when that will be available. Both the linen and lace and of course my all-time favorite, the bohemian, will be available in the textile kit form. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed. I really do hope that this helped you in understanding how you can use the textile kit along with the embellishments to not only decorate, let's say your heirloom envelopes, but for also to decorate your journal pages. I know sometimes it can look very challenging and perhaps you can look at it and think, how in the world am I supposed to do that? Or how can I create that? Or how can I transform fabric, embellishments, paper into something that really speaks to my heart and something that can turn into something so special that you can document your life in. So I truly hope that you guys liked it. I had so much fun because I got to work with all of my favorite materials and mediums, which is fabrics embellishments, even my gelatos and pastels. So I'm really happy and excited that you guys decided to spend some time with me and watch the video. So I truly hope that you guys enjoyed this journal with me and definitely let me know if you're going to be trying that cute little notebook technique with just connecting the pages simply with washi. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and of course until next time I hope that you guys have an amazing day filled with peace and love. Bye-bye.